Welcome to Nomad PHP Lightning Talks. Our Lightning Talks are given um, every month. We do two in the U.S. chapter meeting and one in the EU chapter meeting. And they're five-minute talks about a specific topic. Tonight we have Sasha Oliver Prolich talking to us about using an event store in PHP. So, Sasha, let me make you presenter. Okay. Um, hi. Um... My name is Sasha. I am an open source developer and a contributor to Zen Framework, and I am the maintainer of the proof components. Um, there are a couple of other projects that I'm working on, but um, today we want to talk about CQRS and event sourcing. Well, you can do um, CQRS without event sourcing, but you can't do event sourcing without CQRS. So let's start with CQRS first. CQRS stands for Command Query Responsibility Segregation. And basically what this means is that we want to separate our red models from the bright models. And when we take a look at our basic uh, CRUD application that uh, we mostly develop, we have one common model for uh, the query side and for the command side. And if we want to split those, we create a separate red model for the query and a separate write model for the command side. So what are commands? Um, commands are value objects. And when you uh, execute a command, you don't return anything. Um, a short example for a command is here a command change username. We have a constructor where we put in the user ID and username, and we have getters for the user ID and username. And as you can see, we don't have any setters because this is a value object and it's immutable. So how are these commands executed then? Uh, through a command bus. Um, we, I can show you how we can set up one command bus. In this case, we use the proof a command bus. Um, we just instantiate it and create a router. And in this case, we want to route the change username command to a change username handler. And when we have done this, we can simply dispatch a new command. Um, we can also uh, take a short look at the uh, change username handler. This is how it would look like, for example. We uh, take the command change username. Um, we fetch a user and we call a method on it and we take everything from the command and we don't have uh, some like five or whatever the number of parameters. We only have the command as the only parameter um, that we have in our invoke method. So uh, what are the pros? Um, first of all and most important, we code with intent. Um, that's also the additional uh, feature that we can scale the reds and writes independent from each other. But most important, we like to code with intent. There are also some cons at, this, at the downside. First of all, it adds a little bit more boilerplate, and we have to write the, the, separation, the, the separated models for the red side and for the right side. So this is more stuff to do. And it adds also a little bit of complexity. So it's not something you would fit to every application. But um, if you have a more complex application and you don't want to handle everything with simple CRUD, then this is uh, the right way to go. So let's talk about event sourcing. Um, when we talk about event sourcing, we like to store all changes of application state as a series of events. And um, we can take a short example. Um, the example is a to-do application. We like to post to-dos to our website. And we have now some commands like to-do was posted, deadline was added to to-do, to-do was marked as done, and perhaps the to-do was also reopened, and the to-do was marked again has done. Um, so all these events are part of an aggregate. 
An aggregate is an isolated domain model that runs business logic through events. Um, we can take a short look of how this would look like um, with our to-do example. We have a class to-do and uh, a named constructor called post. We need a text, a user ID who posted it, and a to-do ID. And after we created the instance, the most important part is that we record that a to-do was posted with the given parameters and we return the new instance. Um, we can also take a short look at uh, some other methods like reopen to do and first of all we like to check whether or not the to do is marked as done and after that we can record that a to do was reopened. So after we, we made it uh, we record that an event was recorded. We need we have to update the aggregate route to reflect this new state. Um, so, for example, when to do was posted, we take from the event all the new uh, stuff and we assign it to the uh, aggregate, like to do ID, assignee ID, text, and status, and in another example, when a to-do was marked as done, we just need to update the state with a new status that we got from the event. So in this case, I extended from an aggregate root class. Um, you don't have to do this, but it helps a lot to have a uh, common aggregate root abstract class. And uh, we, let's take a short look at how this record that method works. Um, first of all, um, we need to increase the uh, version. And we put in our property recorded events, uh, our new event, with a given version ID. And then we apply the event. The apply method is uh, pretty simple. We determine an event handler method for the given event and we handle the method with this event handler. This is basically our function that I, or a method that I showed you before, like um, when to do was posted or when to do was reopened. So back to our aggregates. Um, we like to reconstitute the aggregate and we do so, we do so by reapplying a stream of events. Um, the basic function should look like this. We create a new instance and um, we replay a stream of uh, historic, historic events and then we can return our instance. Now that we can um, update and uh, reconstitute an aggregate route, from a history of events, we like to persist it also, and this is where the event store comes into play. Um, basically, we take a command. This, uh, the command gets executed, and there are some events triggered, and these are uh, recorded to the event store database. A basic uh, short example how this would look like is we have a stream name, we have a couple of events. In this case, it's to do was posted, deadline was added to to do, and a to do was marked as done. We begin the event store transaction, create a new stream with the given stream name and the events, and we commit the uh, transaction. So everything that is uh, done in one transaction, you can also have multiple events, and this is and done uh, persisted in a single transaction. Now um, we have the write site ready, but um, we need to have a red model. So we like to create a projection of our events so we can query it more efficiently because um, the listed events on uh, the database are not very friendly for queries. 
but you can have multiple projections for an aggregate route, so we can make uh, specialized um, query tables where we can query even across aggregates and we don't need any joints at all. So let's take a short look at how projections work. Um, we take a to-do projector example again, and uh, in this case that a to-do was posted, we simply insert uh, the event data into the database and then we can query it with our red model site. When a to-do was marked as done, we simply update the status from this um, to-do with a new status and give an ID. And this is basically how you would work with projections. There are some uh, nice features about event sourcing. First of all, it is very fast. It's append only, so it, the performance is really limited only by the speed of your hard disk. So you have incredible write performance, and uh, this is a nice feature. And it's important for very, uh, for very, very big applications with lots of load. And the event sourcing stuff is immutable, and we have no joints at all when we like to query something. And you get a complete history for free. That means we have recorded all events, and we can go back in history and see what, what's going on, and we can replay all this stuff and see what's going on there. There are some cons, but mm, not really. Most of all, the only really con is uh, that it's an overkill for a really simple CRUD application, but perhaps it's sometimes also usable in a smaller application, especially when you want to learn new stuff like this. So it's perhaps not bad, not bad to start with. Um, so let's wrap it up. Use commands, handle these commands with a command bus, separate red model from write model, uh, trigger domain events, and the projectors uh, receive events and update the red model. And this is how you do event sourcing. You can contact me at uh, github.com slash Polich is my uh, GitHub profile. I'm also available at Twitter. And in the proof GitHub chat, you can ask any questions as you want uh, about proof event sourcing, about the service bus. There are lots of uh, people in there. And I am ready to assist wherever possible. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Hey, if you want to be on a Nomad Lightning Talk, please email joe at nomadphp.com. Please, to God, do not email me. Joe's the one that handles them. If you email me, I'll forward them straight on to Joe. We'd love to have you. If you're a speaker and you want to try out a new topic, if you are thinking about getting into speaking and you want to see how well you can do, please contact Joe and set up a Nomad PHP Lightning Talk.